The wait is finally over. The inaugural season of the College Poker Tour will come to an end. And Scottsdale, Arizona is the location where seven of the top college poker players in the nation will compete for the College Poker Tour National Championship. It began with 350 students from over 200 colleges and universities, but only one student will take home the trophy and have the right to call themselves the best college poker player. Awesome. We flew the best of the best out to compete at the highest level. We wanted to see which colleges bred the best poker players. These are the best college poker players in the country. Sit back and enjoy this ride. Here we go. Welcome to the College Poker Tour National Championship. Introducing first, entering this final table in seventh place, representing the University of Washington, a warm husky welcome for Max Manfow. Hey, I'm Max Manfow and I'm a senior at the University of Washington. I'm a college athlete. I play tennis at University of Washington and I'm trying to bring my little big man mentality on the court, trying to bring it to the table. I've been short my whole life, so coming in as a short stack, I might have to play it safe and then push, but if I get back in the game, then I think uh, I might throw out a few false tells. Introducing it, seat number three. Entering this final table in sixth place, representing Adams State University. A warm grizzly welcome for Jake Hughes! My name is Jake Hughes. I'm originally from West London. I came to the States in 2010. My game plan would probably be just uh, if I play smart, play my position, play tight. I don't think the chips will come into play too much. Introducing in seat number six, entering this final table in fifth place from Adams State University. A warm grizzly welcome for Isaiah Rubio! Isaiah Rubio, I'm a senior, I'm representing Adam State University. Sometimes I want to play fast and loose and sometimes I just want to be conservative and see how everybody's going, you know, fill out the competition. It's important to fill them out, not to fill them up, so, you know, I just got to watch out what I'm doing. Introducing in seat number four, entering this final table in fourth place, representing Duke University, a warm blue double welcome for Dennis Zahn. Dennis Zahn, senior, Duke University. I'm a middling stack, uh, I'm pretty comfortable in that position. I, I have enough chips to be able to play comfortably for at least one or two blinds. After that, I'll have to decide you know, which players are more comfortable and which players I can you know, try and exploit a little bit. But I'm feeling pretty good coming in. Middle stack is nothing to be worried about. In seat number five, after an impressive season, placing in the top 10 in 39 league qualifiers. From Adams State University, a warm, grizzly welcome for Angel Rugg! I'm Angel Rugg, I'm from Adams State University, and I'm the only female at the final table. <laughs> My strategy is to go in there and get a feel for how the tables go in, and go for the good hands, and get to heads up, and just go for it all. Introducing in seat number seven. Entering this final table in second place, representing UC San Diego, a warm trident welcome for Max Giganti. I'm Max Giganti, senior at UC San Diego, and I'm second in chip count. I uh, feel pretty confident with it. I mean, I uh, don't have the pressure of chip leader, and I feel like I'm in a good position to have a good chance at winning this whole thing. Everybody get up, and finally, in seat number one, Entering this final table in first place, representing Florida State University, a warm seminal welcome for Thomas Thornburg. I'm Thomas Thornburg. I'm from Florida State University, and I'm a sophomore. I'm leading the chip count right now, so I feel pretty confident. Throughout this process, I'm going to try to um, bully the small stacks and um, increase my stack size. 30 blinds levels. You ready? All right, back up. Shuffle up and deal. Start deal. CPT, baby. 2014 National Championships. Final table going on right now, man. 
First thing I remember was going down the escalator in the airport and you know just being taken completely by surprise. You just had a camera out right there. Arizona. This is like my first time in Phoenix. It is? Yeah. Me too. It is. Better than Yeah, yeah! College Poker Tour. Dot com, right? Yeah. Like, how, about, how does one get involved into that? We'll go to collegepokertour.com. We'll do. Get, get some course credits. Okay. Play for $10,000. Okay, that's what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. Where are you at? The awesome mom. The destination is The last time I saw a house like this in person was in a movie. As the moment we pulled up, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. I didn't realize that you guys would be putting up this huge show for us. That's when it really like made me realize the magnitude of this event. What I'm most excited about is playing poker on a big stage with professional table, professional dealer, all the lights, the cameras, an announcer. I think it's going to be incredible. I don't know if I'm ever going to like reach this point in my life again. It's amazing. I was excited for anything. I was happy to accept even Motel 6 if it had to be. I don't really care where I finish at this point. Coming here, I already feel like a winner. Anything on top of this is just icing on the cake. Welcome to the inaugural season of the College Poker Tour National Championships. I'm your host, Ryan Johnson, accompanied by Brad Lonson. We've all been waiting months for this. The kids are finally at the table. Brad, any expectations? Ryan, I expect a lot of high quality play from these students, and I'm excited to see the outcome. Let's get down to the blinds. Now, since this is the final table of the national championships, we are starting off right where we left off a couple months ago. The levels are 30 minutes long, and we're starting with the small blind at 750 and the big blind at 1500. Angel Rugg from Adams State will start off with the button. Now, as you guys can see, the players were introduced according to their chip stack, with Max Manthau coming in the smallest stack of 25,000, or right around 17 big blinds and FSU's Thomas Thornburg with 132,000, again, roughly 88 big blinds. Brad, what should we look out for in these early hands here at the final table? Well, for the smaller stacks, picking the right places and playing position is very crucial, and I expect the big stacks to do a lot of bullying with a looser range of hands. I agree, let's get into this. You can escape your way to a championship, huh? Nope. All right, Brad, we start this first hand off with a four-way pot. JQ's calls with King-10 offsuit. I'll call. And so does Isaiah Rubio from the button with his Queen-5 offsuit. Call. And Gigante completes the call in the small blind with 750, and the big blind checks down. Here comes the flop. The flop comes eight Jack King with Jake Hughes pairing up his kings. Not a lot of help for everybody except for Jake Hughes here as he bets half the pot at 3,000. And it looks like he scares them all off and takes down the first hand. All right, indeed he does. Congratulations to Jake Hughes taking down that first pot. Low chip count, but showing a lot of confidence, Brad. I'm feeling pretty confident about the competition. Some top competitors here, you know, they've made it to the final table. Everyone's of a high quality. There's not anyone in particular that I'm truly scared of. Angel of AS, Adam State, she's a top competitor and she, she will play to win. So if I had to pick one person in particular, it'd be Angel. Brad, it is definitely neat to see that we've got three competitors from the same school, Adam State University. Where's Adam State located, by the way? They're located in Alamosa, Colorado. It is a tiny town. Not many students, but they have a great poker club there. Poker is huge in Alamosa for some reason. Very neat to see. Poker is definitely beyond any borders. Let's get into this next hand action. Angel, who's your biggest rival at the table? Inside the info. Sir, is it Thomas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Table talk starting early here. I like it. This is great to see. Zahn raises to 3.2K at the hijack position with pocket deuces. Popular bet. 
Angel easily calls with her pocket sixes, as does Rubio with suited ace eight. Wow. Flop comes Rubio making trips with those eights. My favorite number eight, Brad. I love seeing him up there. Well, Zahn does the smart thing here and tosses his 5,000 continuation bet into the pot, hoping that no one else has an eight. Raise. Ooh, raise. But as we see here, one of his opponents actually does. Heads up action here. It's the lady and the gentleman. Well, the turn sees the nine of hearts, which doesn't help either one of them. Angel with the quick check. Put in five grand. And Isaiah puts 5K into the pot. Ooh, looks like an auto call there from Angel here. Oh, wow. I think Angel knew that six was going to be coming right there. This is one of two cards that Angel needed to complete her full house here. Rubio got something to think about here. Let's see what's going on. He wants to see what's going on. Oh, that's got to sting for Rubio when he sees it. That is a devastating river for Isaiah right there. And Angel scoots up into third position right here. What's it like being the top female competitor on tour? I am the only female at the final table. It's great. A lot of pressure from my other girls. <laughs> but, you know, I'm excited. Hopefully, I beat the guys. <laughs> I am a competitive person. I love to win, hate to lose. It's awesome being in a co-ed environment athletically because there's not many areas where we can compete on the same level, girls versus guys. And it's amazing to have the experience to do it myself. So I'm excited and ready to be at that table. It's amazing having a cruise up for grab because I've never been on one. If I win the College Poker Tour Championship, I'd probably want to go to maybe the Bahamas or Hawaii or something. I'm going on the cruise to Hawaii. You know, I want to go there before it sinks. <laughs> I've been to Hawaii with my fiance, so it would probably be either the Caribbean or the Mediterranean. One of those cruises, definitely. When I win this tournament, I'll probably take my girlfriend uh, to the Mediterranean on the cruise. It'll be the experience of a lifetime. Nothing better than playing for a cruise. Let's cruise back to the action. Action folds around to the little big man. Call. I like his chances here, Brad, and he needs a move here. He does. I would have liked to see him either raise here or even push all in with his jacks pre-flop. I agree with you, Brad. He needs to probably make a big move. Let's see if this pans out for him. And we are to the flop. Six, eight, five, two diamonds. I still like him. I think we got a chance for the little man here. I mean, he is still looking good with his pocket jacks here. Rug bets 3,000. Rubio with a quick call. Max has to like this flop. He sees a bunch of low cards on the board. All right, I'm all in. All in. And Max, with his over pair, decides to move all in. Little man feeling a little bigger here. 20, 21. Call. Angel quickly calls with her flush jaw on an open-ended straight job, putting Max's tournament life on the line. And Rubio bows out. Turn comes to a hearts. Brad, not really helping anybody there. No, it doesn't. Angel really needs any diamond, a nine, or a four. She has about a 32% chance of hitting one of those. Oh, and it is a four of diamonds. The angel gets her wings on that one, Brad. A three seven. She does complete her flush right there, sending Max Manth out from the University of Washington out in seventh place. Hey guys, it's Sienna Dorsey here. I'm with Max Mantho. He just got knocked off in seventh place. Talk me through your hand. Uh, I knew as a short stack I was probably going to push early. Um, I didn't get any good cards until finally I got jacks. I didn't push right away, but after I saw three low cards on the flop, I pushed and Angel made the right call. She had a flush draw, um, but she got me on the river. I felt like I had a slight advantage and didn't work out my way. So you had a longtime friend, the other Max at the table. Did that play yeah. at all into the way you played? I wanted it to. <laughs> Yeah, he, I mean, we were probably going to be, uh, it was going to be tough to keep a straight face if we were going to go head to head, but it didn't happen. Max, my friend from University of Washington, he's the one who actually introduced me to College Poker Tour. So we uh, had our little reunion. Once we arrived, we checked out the place and then we saw the ping pong table, thought we'd play a game. Uh. Ah! <laughs> he calls it sting ball, I call it welts. The loser has to pull up their shirt and then the other guy gets to 
to try to make a welt as hard as you can. He has some bruises all over. I've got about five of them. I only have a couple, fortunately. Even though I won most of the game, so I don't know how that happened. So Max, you are out first, so it's just me and you out here, so let's go get in the pool. <laughs> I'd love to, <laughs> let's do it. I've never been in a house like this ever. Vaulted ceilings, TVs everywhere. There's pool tables, there's ping pong tables. When a house has a putting green of its own, I'd say then it's pretty high class. I don't know how many bathrooms and bedrooms there are. There's probably like 10 at least. I've never been in a house with this many bathrooms. <laughs> it's like a fun house. It's fun being one of the players here and meeting all of the all the kids from all the other schools. I was one of the last two guys to roll into this place. I came with Thomas. I walk in and there's a private concert going on right as I'm rolling in. But Carly was performing and she was absolutely fantastic. The concert was amazing. Very talented girl, she's unbelievable. It ain't easy. Thank you. Definitely a weekend long rock star experience here at the CPT National Championships. Big shout out to Carly Page, that was an unbelievable performance. And as you can see Brad, these kids are having a time of their lives. They sure are. Now with Max out, we are now down to six players with Thomas Thornburg still up top and Jake Hughes with only 1900 after he lost a lot of his chip stack in the last couple hands. He'll probably be forced to go all in very soon here. Let's get back to the action. We go straight into this hand with Zahn raising to 7K with a 10 jack suited. Rubio with decisions. He's gonna bow this one out, Brad. Cool. And we see Gigante calls with the other black 10 and jack. We go heads up, it's dark and cloudy. And the flop is a little dark and cloudy. Two spades. Gigante is the obvious favorite here with the flush draw, but it's going to be very interesting to see how these two players go head to head with virtually the same cards. Turn comes queen of hearts. Some straight draws here. Action on Gigante. Oh, he's going to bet there. Looks like Brad almost half the pot bet there by him. Now we're going to see a chop here if there is anything other than a spade on the river. Well, we didn't see a spade. So we're going to see a little bit of action here. Gigante's going to, going, to, going to throw some action out there. They both do have a straight right now. They have Broadway. My boy from Duke is thinking, stacking, thinking. I like it. Well, he goes straight for his big chips here and starts counting to see how many chips he can steal from Gigante. <coughs> Zon three bets to 43,000. Gigante quickly goes all in. I call, I call. And Zahn calls. Obviously, we're going to see a chop pot here with both of them completing their Broadway. He had the flush draw too. If only that was the king of spades. I like that king. <laughs> I got to say, Duke is really well represented at a lot of things. I've been following football and basketball this year, and it feels good to actually be a, like representing the school that I've been used to just following. Now I feel like I'm the actual player. And, the guys back at Duke are cheering for me, and uh, it's just awesome to be a part of something that's bigger than just yourself, part of your school. It's gotta feel great for these kids to be representing their schools on such a national level. It is, well back to the table here. After a couple orbits, low stack Jay Hughes is forced to go all in with his 3-6 offsuit. Sometimes you gotta make a move, Brad. I'll call, I'll call. Yeah, that was an easy call by Thomas. Only 375 for that call. I gotta be honest with you here, I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for Jake here. Look. Flop comes two jack five, two hearts. Uh, this is giving Jake the gut shot straight jaw. Come on, Jake. I'm rooting for you, Jake. Big Jake fan. Well, the queen of spades is no help and neither is the 10 of clubs. Hate to see Jake go, but let's go ringside with Sienna and see how that broke down. I'm standing here with Jake Hughes. He just got knocked out at sixth place and Jake, walk me through your hand. I pretty much had to go all in. Um, my final hand was 3-6 and I, up against 10 jack, so chances were slim and I, I ended up losing to a two pair, so. Being one of three people from Adam State, do you think that came into play in your game at all? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, we didn't really go up against each other in many hands. Best of luck to Adam State. Hate to see Jake go there. Obviously a lot of passion when it comes to cards and Jake. 
Brad, round us out here. How are we looking? We're down to five. We are down to five, and Thomas Thornburg is still the mega chip stack with Max Gigante just behind him. Isaiah Rubio only has about 10,000 chips left. He's also gonna be forced to go all in pretty soon here. Let's see what happens. Back to the action. Cool. Isaiah with a very low chip stack calls the 3K blind with his ace four offsuit. As the short stack with just 10,000 chips, I think the better move here is just to push all in pre-flop instead of just calling here. I'll call. Thomas Thornburg bullies him a little bit and raises to 6K with his king 10 offsuit. Well, let's go to the flop. Flop comes six to seven. Check. Check. Rubio is favor here with the ace high, but with a lot of low cards on the board here, he has a decision to make here. Ooh, a little frustration coming out of the Rubio camp. I don't know if that was the right play right there. Brad, you smell a mistake? I mean, there's really no reason to fold here as he only has 4,000 left. Now, well, regardless, Brad, Florida State scalps another one here. Thomas Thornburg, everybody. I love facing other people from other colleges, especially representing FSU. Ever since I've been a Seminole, I've loved the campus, I loved everything about it, and just during the whole college poker tour, there's been like, I think 50 state students that's been playing regularly, so I think I should represent it. I feel good about it, and um, I love the rush. I like the rush about playing poker live, especially, and I feel like I can exploit their weaknesses. Thomas seems to have a lot of experience playing in live events. He does, and interesting fact, Ryan, poker is huge amongst the college crowd in Florida because you can actually play in their poker rooms when you're 18. Moment. Rubio miraculously finds a better hand than his ace four, and he decides to go all in with that ace 10 offsuit. Good luck, Rubio. Ace. Raise. Giganti with a raise here. Kind of an obvious raise in this moment, Brad. It is. Obviously, he's trying to isolate Rubio and knock Zan out of the hand here. We are heads up. Rubio's gonna need a little bit of luck here running into these pocket sevens, but I like his chances with the ace high here. Old fashioned race. It's almost a coin flip at this point. Flop comes six, king, queen. Turn comes eight. We've got a big flush draw working. Oh, and the river is a two, and that's it, folks. Rubio is our next victim. You just got knocked in fifth place. Walk me through your hands. Well, I had a ace 10. I went all in uh, against pocket sevens, and I felt it, but I guess I was just not feeling it as much as I thought. It's an amazing experience just being here. I mean, I'm very appreciative of being in this beautiful house and beautiful view, and it is a little mini vacation for me. I wish I could have brought home a vacation for me and my wife as well, but. And your wife actually did compete with you in this tour, right? Yeah, she made it in the tour. It's just I had a, a little bit more chips, so I got to come. So she's back home with the kids while you're here swimming in Arizona, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well said, Sienna. We're down to four players swimming in this final table action. Yeah, with Rubio out, that just leaves one Adam State student left on the table, and that's Angel Rugg, who we currently see in a hand here. Flop comes four, ace, two. We've got a flop straight, Brad. Yeah, that is exactly what Gigante wanted to see right there. Let's see what the turn will come. Turn comes queen of clubs. Angel thinking that her aces are good, makes a half pot bet. Little does she know, Gigante has a straight in the bank and he is just trying to milk as many chips out of her as possible. Pretty quick call there for Angel, confident with her aces. River comes king of diamonds. Quick check from Angel, 25K bet from Max. He's value betting his straight here, trying to get as many chips out of Rug as possible. Unfortunately, Rug makes the call. Straight. Straight. Ryan, with her aces here, it is hard to lay that down. That's gonna clip a few feathers from the old angel wing there, Brad. And with the $74,000 pot here, Gigante moves into the chip lead. Doing it for 50. We're doing it for 50. So my brother has been the, probably the main reason that I've gotten involved in poker. He's played for 
the last 10 years of his life. And this year was the first time my brother cashed in the main event. And he was actually doing really well. Up until day five, he uh, had the chip lead for a little while and ran into a pretty rough beat. I've pretty much learned everything I know from him. He's probably a, a big part of how I've gotten better over the last few years. It's pretty cool that he cashed in the main event and I'm here at the College Poker Tour. So we're both kind of playing poker on different mediums and having fun with it. That is one hell of a coincidence right there, Brad. I wouldn't be surprised if the CPT starts to lend its way to a lot of main event players. I expect you to see a lot of these students later in their career playing on that national level. Uh, do you need assistance, sir, to help you stack the chips? Yeah, you wanna come over here and help me out? Oh, we need some help with these chips. Get a little cocky wearing the hoodie. Brad, where's the advantage? Hat on back or hoodie? I think it's all about the hoodie here. Back to the action, Thornburg folding quick. Zahn. Come on. Make it an all-in moment. Ryan, with blinds at 3,000 and 6,000, the small stack Dennis is on here needs to be aggressive, and I think that's what he's doing here. Adam State looking to drop a knockout punch. Angel calling with her ace two offsuit. Dennis is pretty dominated at this point with his tournament life on the line. Flop comes ace five, jack two diamonds. Turn comes seven of clubs. All right, good game, good game. We have another exodus, Brad. It's sad to see Dennis Zahn go. Dennis Zahn just get knocked out fourth place. Um, tell me about your hand. Well, the fact is I didn't have many blinds left, didn't have many hands going all night. So I figured uh, in the small blind with a queen high hand, might as well just push it, hope to get a fold. You know, with a stack as short as mine, you kind of just have to make a play at some point, otherwise you can get blinded out. Unfortunately, she had a, like a really good hand, the big blind ace deuce against queen deuce. It's an obvious call and you know. So just to clarify, you did yeah. get beat by a girl. That's correct. I got defeated <laughs> by a girl. So what was your best memory here for the weekend? It has to be the dance off last night. Oh boy, I uh, I worked up a sweat there and did you? Yeah, I did, and everyone saw. It was great. What were you guys dancing to? I don't, I don't even know. I was just like kind of flinging my body around, and hoping it kind of moved along for them. I think we have a rematch. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the best dancers in the college poker tour, there right here. If I can get one title, at least it'd be maybe it'd be a. Uh, you know, best hip hop dancer of all time. I, th I that, think. Yes. Would that work? At least in the college poker tour. Well, we're dancing into our final three players here as Gigante has the chip lead, Thomas Thornburg closely behind, and Angel Rug with about half of their chips. We're down to our final two men and a lady, Brad. Let's get back to the action. Good. I need a little one, yeah. This this time. This one. It's my, this my betting on. Sorry, Sorry man. <laughs> we are full service here at the CPT, even massages tableside. Brad Angel looks like she could probably use a massage right now. Thomas Thornburg here raises to 12K with his pocket deuces, and Angel calls behind him. Raise to 60. Chip leader making a little bit of a move here. Giganti is a very aggressive player, and he is proving that on the final table here with his raise to 60K. Let's see what Thomas does. He's going to throw him in. Yeah, he didn't like those deuces, and I don't think Rug is going to like this. Nope. Night. We are not even going to see heads up here. Another pot taken down by the chip leader. That was a great three bet by Giganti. <laughs> no one wants to see a flop. It's the hoodie. It's the hoodie. The hoodie is working, Brad. With only three players left, players really need to pick their spots and they're not going to be throwing chips in for no reason. Next hand here, let's see the action. Heads up here. 20 on top. Thornburg raises to 24,000. Interesting play here. Angel calls with her suited queen six of diamonds. She has been getting very lucky with her diamonds on the final table here. Flop comes five, four, three, one diamond. Thomas Thornburg pairs up his fives. Thornburg backs 20 grand. I don't think Angel is gonna shy away here with her open-ended straight draw. Exactly right, Brad. She calls here with just under 25,000 behind her. 10 of diamonds. Angel really likes that turn card right there, giving her a little bit more of a chance to stay in this tournament. How much you have left? Asking for a girl's number. Thornburg doesn't strike me as a guy to ask a girl for her number, Brad. I think he might be asking about her chip count, Ryan. All right, I'm all in. He doesn't even wait to hear all of her digits. He's taking her all in. Okay. Well, with only 25K behind her, this is kind of an easy call with the flush draw on the board. 
Angel's got 14 outs. Good luck, Angel. River comes five of spades. Thornburg with the full house. Our crowd favorite, Angel Rug, is knocked out in third place. Our Twitter handle is going crazy right now. Let's go to Sienna. Hey guys, I'm here with Angel Rug. You just made it to the third place in the final table. Tell me about your last hand. My last hand, I was hoping for that straight or that flush and didn't get it, so I went bust. You were the only girl at the final table. Do you think that played into effect at all? Um, <laughs> it played in effect in my cheering squad. They even started chanting. <laughs> I'm not planning to let this end. I love poker and I'm gonna keep going. Get the speed. College Poker Tour, honestly, is one of the best poker organizations I've you know, dealt with. They've done an unbelievable job here in the first year. So far, I've been pleasantly surprised with everything that they've done. I didn't expect anything like this. It's kind of refreshing to see an organization that is still trying to organize these new poker ventures for college-age students. I just feel like we all have the same mindset of trying to just play poker and representing our school. And really, it's a long time coming. I think poker is getting younger and younger. There's a lot of college kids trying to play poker. It's just nice to see other students around the nation as interested as in poker as I am. There's just a lot of guys that have a common interest in poker, which is really cool. How many people can say, I went to college, I won a tournament, and now I'm here in Phoenix? <laughs> people can come and play. They don't, they don't have to have a huge background in poker, and it's just an awesome place to meet new people and have a chance to come out to a place like this. And I'm really excited for the future. It's a once in a lifetime thing. Don't hesitate, man. Just jump in there head first and let the ride happen. We are heads up here at the CPT National Championship. Our chip leader, Thomas Thornburg, sitting at 268,000. Slightly behind him, Max Giganti at 235,000 in chip count. Let's take it down to Siena. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the 2014 College Poker Tour National Championship. We are going heads up with Max and Thomas. You guys are both already winners in my eyes. May the best man win. Be fun. Right. Ryan, to be honest with you, I saw this matchup coming. Both of these players are fierce competitors awesome. and they both have the experience needed to get to this point. Ryan, any predictions on the outcome? Tough one to have predictions on, Brad. You've got Giganti that comes from the family pedigree of poker players, but you have Thornburg growing up at a state that allows you to start to play live poker at such an early age of 18. You can bet the cruise later. You can bet the cruise later. Brad, they're already talking about possibly betting this cruise. I love it. This is going to be a good time. Ryan, the trophy is now on the table. These students have one thing in mind, and that is the championship title. The championship title, the trophy, and the cruise all on the line right now. Heads up play opens at 5K and 10,000 on the blinds. Let's see what happens. Action will start on the small blinds. Action opens up here with Jack Nine for Thornbird against Pocket Six is Giganti. Brad, what are we going to expect here? That's a raise. Now that we are heads up, play is going to be very loose. 20,000 total? 20,000 total. Loose is exactly what it is with Thornburg raising to 20K, Giganti re-raising to 50K, loving his Pocket Sixes. I like that three bet right there, Ryan. Thinking, thinking from Florida State. We're gonna fold. Giganti takes down our first heads up hand here. Now, as many of you know out there, heads up is a very different play than when there's other competitors on the table. Action continues. Giganti currently at the chip lead. Action on him, 5K to call. 25. Of course, he's gonna raise it to 25 with his suited four queen. Yeah, cool. And a call. As you see, Thomas does not want to give up his blinds here, and he calls with a 4-8 offsuit. Wow, what a flop there for Thornburg. 
He flops the straight there. Thornburg flops the straight, but Giganti with the flush draw. You know, Ryan, he also has that open-ended straight draw. This is gonna 40, get interesting. 40,000. Giganti bets 40,000. Gonna be hard for him to get out of this hand, Brad, especially with all these outs. Okay. And a call. We've got a call. He goes straight to his chips here. I like that. Giganti's dialed in here, hoodie or no hoodie. Let's go to the turn six of clubs. No help for either one of them. But Thomas is still sitting pretty with his straight here. Giganti's still hanging on to this flush draw though, Brad. The biology major dissecting his chips here. 50,000. And he bets out 50,000. Yeah, count the pot. I can spread it. Yeah, okay. I like that bet from Thomas. It really puts Giganti on edge. I mean, this is a pot worth a lot of yeah. money. He wants a little more investigation on that pot too. And yep, that pot did not add up for the economics major. He let him go. Thornburg coming in here at 263,000 against 255 for Gigante. It's really anybody's game right now. Will it be Florida State? Will it be UCSD? Blind still at 5K and 10K. Thornburg is first to act. Thornburg making first move here on our next hand. With a king high here, this is an easy raise. 65. 65. 65. And Giganti comes back at Thomas with yep. the three bet, bumping it up to 65,000. Crowd's getting behind him here. Thornburg thinking about it. He's going to shove now. Okay. When I say shove, he's going to fold now. I like saying shove for chips or for cards. Ryan, three hands into this heads up matchup. What do you think? Brad, I think we're seeing stellar poker being played. I still think pedigree, though, is going to outweigh experience, but I've never been right before. I hear that. Action on Gigante. It's going to take him 25. 5K to call, but he's raising 25. to 25,000. Thornburg, will he play with this with suited seven queen? He does. It Takes it to 53 bet, Brad. Your thoughts on that? That is a very interesting three bet, but Gigante is going nowhere with his pocket nines, oh. and that's an easy call for him. Exactly. Well said. Easy call. Trophy on the table. Here comes the flop. Queen three eight. Two diamonds on the board. He feels very dominant with these pocket nines. Most likely Thomas does not have a queen, so I think he's gonna bet out here. Fifty-five. Right again, Brad. Bets fifty-five thousand. A call. An easy call for Thornburg with the queen. This is a very pivotal moment right here. There is two hundred and ten thousand in the pot. And this hand could be the game changer. Turn comes three of clubs, pairing the board, Brad. I like Thornburg's odds here at a 95% favorite. Check. Thornburg checks. This makes him look very weak here. I love this check. Hold on. And it sounds like it's working, Brad, because Giganti just shoves all in. Okay. With some theatrics, Thornburg calls. This is it, boys and girls. As you can see on the top of the screen here, Giganti only has two outs. He needs a nine. This is not looking good for him. Thornburg looking confident. Need this. <laughs> he has two outs right now. He needs one of the two nines. And it is a devastating blow for Giganti. We now have a massive chip leader heads up here at the final table. Giganti is gonna have to play some great short stack poker if he wants a chance at the title. Uh, deal with the short stack. As you see here, folks, Thornburg, a massive leader at 475,000 in the chip count. Giganti at a mere 42K. Like those odds. Brad, can you see a comeback here? This is gonna be a hard comeback, Ryan. Thornburg has him absolutely dominated here in chip count. Thomas Thornburg has an ace nine suited on the button here. Oh. Thornburg with the pressure. Call. And Giganti snap calls, putting his tournament life on the line, Brad. King high in this position, you have to go with it. He doesn't have a lot of chips behind him. This could be it, Brad, this could be it. Flop comes Jack, 8-8. Eight, eight. Big clubs for Thornburg. Yeah, flush you out. And there it is, Thomas Thornburg with the nut flush on the turn. We have a winner here, folks. Let me be the first to congratulate Thomas Thornburg from Florida State University, your 
2014 College Poker Tour National Champion. Brad, what a ride and what a weekend. I couldn't say it better myself, Ryan. The mansion, the concert, the cards, the students, and all the great times we had this weekend. It was a sight to see, and I'm glad I was here to witness it. Brad, I totally agree with you. What a spectacle this was all weekend. The poker action was just the cherry on top. I'm losing my voice on this one, Brad. It's unbelievable. Let's go down ringside with Sienna, who's got our runner-up, Max Giganti. Hey guys, I'm here with the 2014 College Poker Tour National Champion runner-up, Max. Tell me about that final hand. Uh, I was pretty short stacked, so when he shoved, uh, I had a call with King 3, and he came up with Ace-9, and just didn't happen for me this time. Tell me about the hand that changed the chip stacks. Well, uh, Thomas and I were in a pretty big pot, and the flop came out, queen eight, three, and I had pocket nines, and I bet the flop, he called, and the turn brought another three, and I decided to shove all in, and he called me with a queen, and I just didn't think he had it. How does it feel? How are you feeling right now? Overall, I, I feel like I played okay throughout the tournament, but she ran into a little trouble at the end, and I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. I don't know if you know this, but you're right off the table. Every single player got knocked out according to their chip count. Do you think that was coincidence? Uh, it's just pretty f***ed up, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> a quick look at our results. Florida State taking first place again with Thomas Thornburg's stellar play. Now, let's go table side for the trophy presentation. Thank you everyone for attending. My name is Patrick Barthe. I'm the executive director of the College Poker Tour. And now for the presentation of the awards. But before we do that, I'd like to thank a couple people here, our sponsors, All In. And for our championship trophy, I'd like to introduce Marty Wilkins with I Wanna Go Cruises. Thomas, what a great tournament. Thank you very much for winning this wonderful trophy. We're glad to present this to you from I Wanna Go. And congratulations. Awesome. I'd like to present to you a seven night cruise to the Caribbean to join us on a poker cruise. Yeah. Congratulations. On behalf of everyone involved, thank you. We pulled off a magnificent feat. Congratulations to Thomas Thornburg, 2014 national champion of the College Poker Tour. Thank you. Well, that is a wrap, ladies and gentlemen, to the inaugural season of the College Poker Tour. A big thank you to All In Media House and All In Magazine, I Wanna Go Cruises, Rocket Frog, and all of our family of sponsors. Until next year, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned to collegepokertour.com.